of voters, some of the crossbench senators attracted as little as 0.5 of 1% of the vote to actually win their seat. So any change to the allocation of preferences represents an existential threat to several who might aspire towards re-election. Malbruff's suggestion is predictably meeting outright hostility, especially from the Liberal Democratic Party's David Lionhelm. Well, David Lionhelm, the government's intentions seem fairly clear and the Senate crossbench appears to be in its sights. Do you fear that micro-parties will become endangered species in the parliament? Well, that's, that seems to be the threat. But uh, this might be a brain fart by an ill-informed member of the House talking about the Senate. Um, the, the noises I've been hearing are that the government wants to uh, be friends with the crossbench, not to uh, pick a fight with them. And uh, I can't think of a better way to pick a fight with them to, than to threaten to put them out of business. So, so uh, in that sense, it's illogical in the current environment, is it, with Malcolm Turnbull sending signals that he will be more consultative? Yes. Malcolm Turnbull has said uh, he wants to talk, to talk to the crossbench, deal with the crossbench. He's run, us, he's run all of us already. Um, and, uh, the, you know, the friendliness vibes are, uh, are spreading our way. And then along what was the fish. general vibe of that conversation, by the way? Well, the, the vibe of the conversation was he wants to uh, have a better relationship with us than, uh, than the government did under the uh, Prime Ministership of Mr Abbott. Um, we're all taking him at his word. The, the general feeling is fairly positive on the crossbench, but uh, that could all be undone with... Uh, um, with an attempt to put us out of business. So this has come right out of the blue from your point of view? My impression was that uh, all talk about uh, changing the group voting ticket system and uh, Senate voting reform was off the table, um, that, that the Electoral Commission didn't have time to implement it anyway and that uh, there, was no, there was no further consideration um, so this is a bolt out of the blue. Well, let's continue on the presumption that it might proceed. Would you retaliate using your vote against government legislation or retaliate by any other means? Uh, uh, all of the above, I think. We, we, would, uh, we would retaliate. I think the whole entire crossbench would become uh, totally hostile if we thought this was a realistic um, chance of proceeding. We, we would vote against uh, government bills. Uh, we would be uncooperative on procedural matters. I think the government would, uh, would soon find out what it was like to have a hostile Senate. A dysfunctional one? Well, it, it's not dysfunctional if we're doing it deliberately. Dysfunctional means uh, that uh, it's failing. Um, it would be deliberate if, uh, if we decided to be obstructive. All of this assumes that Labor wouldn't find either this measure or other government bills to its satisfaction, thus rendering the crossbench uh, immaterial, really, to any votes. Have you thought that through? Yes, we've thought that through. The, the situation with uh, Labor is uh, they want to win the next election, so they don't really care about the government's relationship with the crossbench. They're not going to save the situation for the government. But can I also add that uh, Labor is also not impressed with the idea of getting group voting tickets. The reason is that it will lock the Senate into a, uh, a coalition, Labor, Greens, uh, death rattle, and uh, Labor does not want to be locked into a permanent embrace with the Greens. And if that change was made, I hear what you're saying about the Labor Party, but do you think it opens the possibility of the coalition, re-energised at its base by Malcolm Turnbull, gaining 39 senators, an outright majority? For the government to get control of the Senate with 39 senators would be really... Uh, it's difficult to imagine. It would, re would require a lot. It would certainly require a double dissolution. Half Senate election wouldn't, wouldn't do it, even if they did very well. Um, it's historically very unlikely. There's only been very short periods in, in uh, the history of the Senate when the government has actually had a majority. So I think it would be a bit of a uh, pie-in-the-sky uh, ambition. Now, you benefited at the last election because of the position you were placed on the ballot paper and, indeed, the name of your party, which looks very much like the Liberal Party. Could you get re-elected, in your view, if voting above the line is abolished, or ticket, ticket voting, I should say, is abolished or made optionally preferential? Um, if, uh, if group voting tickets were abolished and uh, we had optional preferential voting above the line, I think we would see the same outcome that we have seen in New South Wales upper house elections where, the, where that already applies. 
Minor parties basically don't get a look in. The only reason they get elected in New South Wales is because there are 21 candidates, whereas in the Senate there's only six. Um, preferences basically don't count. Uh, it's all first past the post. And uh, there really is not much opportunity for a minor party to get elected at all. I think it would wipe all of them out, with the exception of Nick Xenophon in South Australia. Do you think or do you acknowledge that your party or micro parties have, to use the expression, gamed the current system? And if so, do you apologise for that? Minor, the, the major parties have been in steady decline in terms of Senate support for the last three elections. There is a preference, a uh, growing preference amongst the voting public for uh, none of the above when it comes to the three parties, Labor, Coalition and Greens. Minor parties are gaining strength to disenfranchise 26% of the voting population, I think would be profoundly undemocratic. Um, you might argue about which minor party should get elected, but the idea that no minor party should get elected is profoundly undemocratic. OK, and just to finish where we started, if these changes were to be pushed through at Mal Bruff's behest, would that, to, uh, you're calling it a brain fart, but uh, would that unleash the dogs of war from your point of view? Yeah, if, if this proceeds to legislation as implemented, it'll be war. There'll, there'll, be, no, uh, there'll be no concessions, no nice guy. Um, it'll be hostilities uh, um, like you've never seen before. David Lionhelm, we'll keep an eye on it. Thanks for your thoughts today. Pleasure. So fairly obvious where he stands. The independent Senator Nick Xenophon also has plans to be a bigger player in South Australia.